Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in this lesson we're going to talk about thermodynamics and PV diagrams. Our objectives are going to be to understand that energy is transferred spontaneously from a higher temperature system to a lower temperature system, to explain the first law of thermodynamics in terms of conservation of energy involving the internal energy of a system, and to represent transfers of energy through work and heat using PV diagrams. So let's start by talking about the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Why is it the zeroth law? They came up with it after they'd come up with the first three laws and decided, you know, we need to have this one first in order for everything else to work out. And it's a really simple law. What it says is that if object A is in thermal equilibrium with object B, and object B is in thermal equilibrium with object C, then object A must be in thermal equilibrium with object C kind of a simple concept, but you need to have that established in order to allow the other laws to all work out. Now the first law of thermodynamics is something that's going to be slightly more applicable at this point. It says the change in internal energy of a closed system is equal to the heat added to the system plus the work done on the system. Or delta U, the change in internal energy, is equal to Q, where positive Q is heat added to, and W is work done on the system. What this really is, is a restatement of the law of conservation of energy. Again, where positive Q is heat added to, positive W is work done on the system. If energy were being pulled from the system, as in heat taken from the system, or work done by the system, those quantities would be negative. So, work done on a gas. Typically, we're going to use the first law of thermodynamics to examine and analyze the behavior of ideal gases. So it may be useful to explore our understanding of the work done on a gas. If work is force times the displacement, well, that implies then if pressure is equal to force over area, in that case, force must be equal to pressure times area. So we can rewrite the work done as work being equal to pressure times area times our displacement. But we also know that change in volume, delta V, is going to be the area times the change in the linear dimension, delta R. And by convention, because we're calling work done by the system negative, work done on the system is positive, we'll make that negative. This implies then that work is equal to minus P delta V. And that will be very useful as we analyze ideal gas systems. So, sample problem one. 5,000 joules of heat are added to a closed system, which then does 3,000 joules of work. What is the net change in the internal energy of the system? Well, internal energy, change in internal energy is heat added to the system plus work done on the system, which will be 5,000 joules are added to the system, but the system does 3,000 joules of work, so that's going to be negative. Therefore, the total change, the net change in the internal energy of the system must be 2,000 joules. Taking a look at an expanding gas problem. A gas is expanded at atmospheric pressure, or 101,325 pascals. The volume of the gas was 5 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. The volume of the gas is now 5 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. How much work was done in that process? Well, let's start off by looking. Work equals minus P delta V. Or minus P, and remember delta anything is its final value minus its, minus its initial value. So that will be final volume minus initial volume which is negative our pressure, 101,325 pascals, times our final volume, 5 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters, minus the initial volume, 5 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. And when I put all that into my calculator, I find that the amount of work done was negative 506 joules. Why negative? because the gas did the work. All right, let's take a look at PV diagrams, pressure volume diagrams. 
These are useful tools for visualizing thermodynamic processes of gases. We put pressure on the y-axis, volume on the x-axis, and the amount of gas remains constant. So from the ideal gas law, if PV equals nRT, our constants in this case are going to be n and r, not changing here. So we can find pressure from the graph, we can find V from the graph, and knowing n and r are constant, we can also find temperature using some calculations from the graph. All right. As you transition from state A to state B on a PV diagram, notice that the volume increases and the pressure decreases. The work done is the area under the curve. So as you go from A to B, the work done would be that area there. And as the volume expands, the gas is doing work, so W would be negative. And as the volume compresses, work is done on the gas, so W would be positive by our sign convention. Now also note that temperature rises as you travel up and to the right on a PV diagram. So temperature increases as you head in that direction. So let's take a look at a PV diagram problem. Using the diagram below, find the amount of work required to transition from state A to state B, and then the amount of work required to transition from state B to state C. Well, as we go from A to B, work done and going from A to B, notice there's no area under the graph. It's a straight line. Therefore, the work done there must be zero. But how about from B to C? As we go from B to C, the area under the graph is changing. And that area is going to be minus P delta V. Or in this case, our pressure is minus 50,000 pascals, 50 kilopascals, in our change in volume, minus, minus, minus initial is 4 cubic meters minus 2 cubic meters. So 4 minus 2, which implies then that the work done in going from B to C must be negative 100,000 joules. Again, why is that negative? The gas is expanding. It is doing work. Therefore, the energy of the system is going down, a negative W by our sign convention. Now, there are lots of different types of PV processes, and I want to point out a couple of the, uh, of the important ones. In an adiabatic process, heat, Q, isn't transferred into or out of the system. In an isobaric process, pressure remains constant. Straight line, straight horizontal line on the PV diagram. In an isochoric process, volume remains constant, straight vertical line on a PV diagram. And in an isothermal process, temperature remains constant. So let's go into each of those in a little bit more depth. In an adiabatic process, heat isn't transferred into or out of the system. Q equals zero. So if the change in internal energy of a gas or a system is Q plus W, and we know Q equals zero in an adiabatic process, in an adiabatic process, the change in internal energy of the system is equal to the work done on the system. In an isobaric process now, right over here, pressure remains constant. The PV diagram shows a horizontal line, and volume over temperature remains constant for that gas. In an isochoric process, on the other hand, volume remains constant. The PV diagram is a vertical line. There's no area under the graph, so the work done must be zero. Therefore, pressure over temperature also remains constant. And finally, in an isothermal process, temperature remains constant. The lines on these PV diagrams are called isotherms. PV remains constant, and the internal energy of the gas, therefore, must remain constant. So let's do another sample problem here, an adiabatic expansion problem. An ideal gas undergoes an adiabatic expansion doing 2,000 joules of work. How much does the gas's internal energy change? Well, if it's an adiabatic expansion, remember that means that Q is equal to zero. So if the change in internal energy is heat added to the system plus work done on the system, and the heat added to the system is zero, 
then delta U, change in internal energy, is equal to the work done on the system, or since this is doing 2,000 joules of work, negative 2,000 joules. Or another sample problem here. Heat is removed from an ideal gas as its pressure drops from 200 kilopascals to 100 kilopascals. The gas then expands from a volume of 0.05 cubic meters to 0.1 cubic meter as shown in the PV diagram. If curve AC represents an isotherm, find the work done by the gas and the heat added to the gas. Well, the work done as you go from A to B must be zero, and the work done in going from B to C, well, that's just going to be minus P delta V again, or negative 100,000 pascals times our change in volume, final minus initial, or 0.1 minus 0.05 cubic meters, which gives us negative 5,000 joules. That must mean that we have 5,000 joules of work done by the gas. The gas is doing the work. That's what that negative sign means. All right, now we're also on an isotherm, so change in internal energy, delta U, must be constant. So if delta U is equal to zero, that must also be equal to Q plus W. Therefore, Q must equal negative W, or Q equals 5,000 joules. They must have added 5,000 joules of heat to the gas. Ranking processes. Using this PV diagram, answer the following questions. During which process is the most work done by the gas? Well, if the gas is doing the work, we must be going to the right on the volume scale, and that occurs as we go from A to B because you have the most area down there. So that must be the A to B process. During which process is the most work done on the gas? Well, now we're going to the left on the volume axis, and where we have the most area there is going from C to A. So that must be C to A. And which state is at the highest temperature? Well, if we want the highest temperature, we want the point that's furthest to the top and to the right. That, of course, must be point C. Hopefully that gets you started on a couple of the laws of thermodynamics and PV diagrams. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everyone, and make it a great day.